Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Reverend Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to be at his feet. It's a blessing to be at the presence of the Lord to celebrate and to hear the word of our Lord being preached. Today, I believe your life will be blessed because you came. Now, let's open our text for the day. Genesis chapter number 13 and then let's get to the verse now. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. Uh huh. Let's move on. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Mm -hmm. And I will make Thy seed are the dust of the earth, so that if a man can count number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Mm -hmm. Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mar Mama, which is Hebron, and build there an altar unto the Lord. Amen. There are a few things I want us to, I want you to see from this scripture. Abraham was already in the promised land. He was in Hebron. But it was not God's time to give the promised land to him. Why? The promised land will be inherited by a nation and not a family. So it's not Abraham and his family. But even though he had got the seed of Abraham who possessed the land, the blessings and all the pledges went to him, but the time was not yet up. And God gave a promise unto him by the time you come to chapter 15. So you and your descendants, you will be slaves and servants in the land of Egypt. In fact, I did not mention Egypt. You get into that country and for the next 400 years or four generations, you'll be there. Why? God wants to raise a nation. He needed time. So he will send them there. And he knew what to do to bring them there. Hallelujah. As for God, whatever he wants to do, he knows what to do. Praise the Lord. That is one thing about God. So you don't dispute him. You don't fight him. No. Whatever he knows. He wants to do, he knows what to do. You cannot stop him. Yes. So we found later that Isaac, uh, the grandson of Abraham, Joseph, will go into slavery. The family of Jacob will follow up, and all of them finally move in there. 30 years they were there in Egypt. Now let's move on. But God has said, I will give you all the promised land. God has said, and he said, I will give it to you. And Abraham had blessed the Lord and worshipped him already. So that agreement and covenant is sealed. Okay. But it's years to come. When it came to the time of Moses, Moses brought them to the edge, the end, the, the, the boundary, the boundary of a promised land. But he was not supposed, he is not the one to give it to them. Why? No. Moses gave the law. And listen, the promised land was not to be possessed by law. Moses represented the law. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus. It is by God's grace that we enter into the promised land 
it is not by Moses. So God made sure Moses did all that he could. And at the end of it, God said, you will not enter in there. You cannot. And now when you come to Joshua chapter number one. Joshua, let's get to Joshua chapter one. Mm. Moses, my servant, is now dead. Let's start from the verse two. Moses, my servant, is now dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I, give, I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Remember this. God had promised Moses, uh, Abraham, and he's working it out. Now it came to the time of Moses. He said, Moses is dead. Now Joshua, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the people, unto the land which I, I do give to them. I want you to know something. He said, God said, I do give to them. It is God who was doing the offering, and the children should receive it by war. Even the children of Israel, they should receive it by faith. It is God doing the offering. He is giving it to them. So by faith, it is required that you receive it by faith when the things are coming from God. Okay, let's get to the verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Every place, every place. Then it means we have some trekking to do. We have to walk to places where our soul, the soul of our feet will tread on. You see, so that is the, the promise. And I want you to see something very interesting. I call it the commission and the promise. Hallelujah. What? Well, the commission. Joshua, you have been commissioned. Go to possess this land. That is your commission. And the pledge God made is that I will be with you and I'll help you. So that's it. He is supposed to go and to possess the land. He's supposed to go and possess the land. But today our subject is this. God is counting on you. God is doing what? Counting on you. He has given you a pledge. He has given you a promise. He has given a commission. Things to do. But his eyes are upon you. Let's get this scripture. Very interesting. Let's come to the, uh, the book. First Peter chapter number 3. And let's take the verse number 12. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. Hmm. First Peter. First Peter chapter number two, three, verse twelve. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Listen. I want you to take note of this scripture. Very, very, very important. The eyes of the Lord are upon who? The righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen. Israel had an opportunity. They really had an opportunity. And the opportunity was very simple. God had brought them and they were about to enter into the promised land. But then they have challenges. But it is God who was doing the offering. He said, I will give you. I will provide with you. I will supply your needs. All types of promises God has made to them. But then, when you look to Numbers chapter number 14. No, Numbers chapter number 11. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Let's take the verse 1. And when the people complained, I want you to underline complain in your Bible. Very important. When the people complained, it pleased, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it. 
and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Listen, one of the things God hates and he will never be pleased with is complaint. Hallelujah. The Bible says, his ears are open to your prayer and his eyes are on you. He's actually waiting for your prayer. So why do you complain? Why don't you tell him your need? Why don't you make the request? But instead, being human, we start praying. And by when you read the account of Israel, let's get to the verse 4. There were some people among them. They called them mixed multitude. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell lasting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us fresh to eat? Complaining. But don't blame Israel first. Look at their, the context and what they were in. For, for some time, they have been feeding on the manna. Manna was a good meal. It kept them healthy. And for the next 40 years, none of them got sick. It was prepared by God. Listen. But this manna, naturally, after eating for a while, being human, they fell low. No, no, no. This is too much. Breakfast manna, supper manna. Every day they ate it twice. So, uh, 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 uh. so you see, they got to a point they started complaining. And God was angry with them. God said, but they were displeased. They were not happy. Why? The mixed multitude among them, let's get to the verse 5, have stirred them up and reminded them of the food they eat. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, and the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onion, and the garlic. Mm -hmm. But now, our soul is dried up. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. This mixed multitude, all they did was just inspire that taste in them, and then begin complaining. So the people will move into murmuring and God turned against them. Hallelujah. When you read the account, but now our soul is dried up. There's nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. So they were complaining, they were murmuring, and God was against them. Some of them died in that place. But let's move on. What is the point I'm making here? The point is this. God is not interested in our complaints. God is interested in our prayers. Instead of complaining, turn to prayer. So how do I pray? But you don't have the things. Why don't you then make requests? God, please, we need some fish. We need some concubines. We need some change in diet. God will not be angry with that. But when you move into complaining, you position yourself and against his provision. And because of that, they suffer for it. Hallelujah. Now, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Listen, the truth is this. There are people who are doing some business in our community here. And you know what they do? All they did was just fix the camera on them. Go to Nimont. Right down there, there are camera fixed all over. So you will be working in the mine pit, but there are cameras on you. Okay? And then they have been giving phones. The supervisors have phones and they are connected to anything you need. If there's any challenge, call. Come on. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. You see, the phones are there to represent the eyes of their manager. No, the cameras, they are there to represent 
the manager. Everywhere. He may be sitting in America, but he was supervising the mines. Right there. How? By the camera. Hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. So God's eyes are upon us. And then he has also given us opportunity to call. We can pray. His ears are open to my cry. It's just like you're holding the phone. You can call. If you have the phone, you can have access to the person you want to call. Why complain? Hallelujah. You see, that is a picture. I want you to get that picture. It's very important. Because, listen, God is not happy at our complaints. But he wants to hear our prayer. And two, it's not only that. His eyes are upon us. I'm saying God is doing what? Looking upon you. He's counting on you. His eyes are on you. The eyes of the Lord are on you. Hallelujah. Ha. His eyes are on me. God is counting on me. His eyes are on me. So once I understand these basic things, that wherever I am, the eyes of the Lord are upon me. And my ears are open. It means I have no permission to complain. He never promised you won't have challenge. God never promised. All that he would say he would give them, he gave them. He never said you won't have challenge. But he gave them access to himself. Ah. Uh, Call on me in the day of the trouble and I will deliver you. God has given you access to himself. We in the New Testament, wow, we are special people. We have been redeemed by the precious blood of a lamb and been set free from sin and may accepted unto him. We have access into his presence and there's nothing that hinder us. So you see, God has access to him so we have no, listen, there's no reason why complaining and murmuring about that. He is looking, counting on you and is watching over you. Now let's move on. So God gave Joshua this command that whatever his soul of he had tread upon, he should possess the land. Joshua did much. In fact, he fought to Jericho. He had challenges with AI. He overcame many places. God answers his prayer. He did a lot of things. But by the time we come to chapter number 13 in Joshua, let's get to chapter. Mm. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. And there remaineth yet much land to be possessed. The job is not yet finished. That's what I said. Job is not yet finished. I want you to say with me, the job is not yet finished. The job is not yet finished. And the eyes of the Lord are on you. He is counting on you. The assignment must be finished. We need to complete it. In our generation, God is counting on us. And he said, you are growing. Yes, some of us are growing. You see, that there are many young people around. But we are growing. And God said now, look, this is what you're going to do. Let's move on. This is the land that here remaineth. All besides of the borders of the Philistines and the Geshurites. No, let's get to verse 6. Verse 6. All the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto Mr. Formia and all the Sidonians, which them will I drive the children of Israel, only divide, only divide, only, only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites as for, for an inheritance as I have commanded thee. Only divide. Why is he dividing? He's bringing responsibility to their doorstep. That's it. Hallelujah. Responsibility is coming to your doorstep. And the eyes of the Lord are upon you. He is counting on you. Okay? Let's move on. Seven. Now therefore, divide this land for inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh. 
There's something I want you to also take note. The nine tribes, are they not 12 tribes? No, not all of them are going to have it because others have theirs ready. Now, therefore, divide this land for inheritance unto the nine tribes and have tribe of Manasseh. D divide it. Why? As for Manasseh, half tribe of Manasseh, and then uh, Ru Reuben and God, they have their own. So they have their portion on the eastern, eastern side of Jordan. So they were enjoying. So all these years they were there, they were raising their cattle, they were, were enjoying themselves. But what about the others? The land is not, they have not finished the assignment. God wants them to finish it. But Moses gave them instruction and said, when the time is up, all of you who have got your, your portion of the inheritance on this side, all the men of war, you cross over and lead Israel into the battle until they have rest. They also have their portion in the land. That was the rule. Okay, let's get to eight, verse 8. With whom the Reubenites and the goddess have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward, even as Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. You see, they have got their own. Now, in fact, what is happening in the church today is that, well, most of the churches are settled. They're enjoying themselves. Things are working. They have good service. They enjoy celebration meetings. They take good offerings and tithes. They pay all their bills. And so they are there. Like, like the Israelites who were where? On the eastern side. They are settled. Their families, everything working out. You see? But the assignment was not yet finished. That's the point. That's the point for emphasis today. The assignment was not yet finished because you can be settled in the church, you can be worshiping and enjoying yourself, but the assignment is not yet finished. He said, Joshua, you are growing, you are now getting old. This divide the land for them. Why the divide? Responsibility must come to your door. And the church must stand up. We need to take up that challenge that this is what God wants us to do. It is not that, no, 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 no. We are blessed, we have that, we have. It's not the blessing and what we have. The issue is that he gave a commission and he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel every creature. That is the commission of a church. We have not yet finished. But we can be settled at the eastern borders and enjoying ourselves for a while. But now, let's come over. Because God is counting on us. He is counting on us to finish the assignment. And the assignment is very simple. Divide the land for us. Now listen, church. To a stage where we are portioned, this is your duty to do it. You need to plant the church here. You need to do this job here. You need to move. Why? Because, listen, otherwise we will settle at the eastern side of the border. And God knew it. So he told Joshua, divide for them. Give them responsibility. Give them assignment. Let them know what is required of them. My eyes are on them. I am counting on them. Hear me, brother. Hear me, sister. The, the fact is that God is counting on you. Anytime you become aware that God's eyes are on you, anything about you changes. Why? Because he's watching me. The man, even in the mines, when he knows that the cameras are on him and he's working, brother, it's no joke. He must work. Why? The cameras are on him. And he didn't supervise. God is counting on us and he wants us to be aware that these last days, his eyes are upon us. Let those who fear God arise to take up the challenge. And other portion of the land are shared men for you and say, you go and do this job, brother. It is not whether you feel it well. Okay, let's try it. Well, we don't have that. We don't. Listen. 
You know one of the reasons we give? <laughs> it's very interesting, but let me give you a scripture to counter that. First Corinthians chapter number 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. It talks about nobody goes to war. You don't go to war at your own expense. You go to war, huh? if you are sent to war, then the bills must be paid. Huh? <laughs> First Corinthians 9, let's get to 7 to 10. And let's read that passage. Okay. Hurry up, hurry up. First Corinthians chapter 9, okay. But I have used none of the honor. Oh First Corinthians, uh huh. Who go off to a warfare anytime at his own charges? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk thereof? Listen, of the flock. The truth is that when you are going for warfare, you are not the same person who will be paying the bill. Let me give you an example. You see the uh, Russia Ukraine war. The president is always going around the world and telling the world that they should support him. And the world has heard his voice and they're giving the leader support. It is not the soldier man in the truncheon or the front line who is going for that money. It's the president doing that job. Nobody goes to war and at his own expense. In the same way, the Lord said, I will be with you. I will provide for you. I will supply all your needs. He will be with us. All we need is trust him. Trust him. Pray. Count on him. And he will do it. Faithful is he that promised. Who will also perform. Listen. We don't go for. That's why we don't need to complain. Because your complaint don't change what is there. What, who brings the changes? It is God himself. Who will provide and supply our needs. Hallelujah. He is the almighty God. So we count on him. He's on our, upon us. He's counting on us. Our needs should come to him. He's calling on us. No one go to his, his own, warfare at any time at his own charges. So all you are going to do, and all that you have sent to do, you don't pay for your bills. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And so when the church sit down and says, we don't have money, is it your money? It's excuses you are giving. Hallelujah. Let's take the challenge and call on him. Thou have sent us to war. We know you are responsible. We are counting on you to supply. Hallelujah. You see, and let's come with some boldness before him and pray for certain prayers and change certain dynamics and cause heaven to respond. And let God respond to our prayer. Hallelujah. Because when you read on company prayer meeting in Acts chapter number four, he said they prayed and the place was shaking. When the Holy Spirit came down, come on. They lack nothing. They lack nothing. Virtually, they lack nothing. This is a promise and a pledge of God unto us. He told Gideon, go in this your might. Yo, Gideon, you go in this your might. We are going in the might of the Holy Spirit. The mighty provider. God said we should wait on him until he comes. You see, so this is it. We don't go to warfare at our own charges. God will supply. And he called the Holy Spirit to provide. Even as we pray, as we call on him in prayer, he will hear and answer us. The heavens will be open and there will be the supply of every need. So needs are not supposed to cause us to be mama. Needs are supposed us to call us to pray and to believe. And as we believe, faithfully he that promise. The challenge is not in our court. It's on his court. The ball should be in his court. Because we had made a request to him. And he cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. Whatever he said he would do it, he would do it. So let's come by faith, trust in the Lord with all our heart, and turn away from our limitations. But we are human. We can also be like Israelites and start complaining about all the, all the food and all the things. No, 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 no. no. That is not it. That is not our calling. No one goes to war at his own expense. So that is not my assignment. I don't go to war at my own assignment. 
Hallelujah. God bless you. Brother, I want to pray with you. And I'm believing you next week will continue from here. You will never be the same. Listen, his eyes are, the eyes of the Lord are upon me. He's counting on me. He knows I will do it. I will, I will shift from complaining and start praying and believing. Trust him to receive supply. Say, well, that, because why? It is said, no one go to warfare at his own charges. I won't go to warfare at my own charges. Let me read this scripture before the law. I say, Lord, I am going to do it, but I'm not going at all my own charges. I am counting on you. You are counting on me. I am counting on you. I am out there on the street doing your will. And let the name of the Lord be praised. Some of the things you read in scripture is very interesting. He said, they were in Macedonia crying and praying. And said, come to Macedonia and help us. Wow. They went to Macedonia with challenges. Yeah, they started with challenges. The first week they didn't have nothing. But God opened the heart of a woman. Lydia, and then they enter in there. May we trust the law to open hearts. May we trust the law to open opportunity even as we move on. Hallelujah. May God bless you. I want to be praying with you now. Next we will continue from here. And I believe the eyes of the Lord are upon you. He's counting on you. God is counting on me. He's counting on me. He's counting on you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for today. Thank you for this privilege. Oh God, for hearing these instructions. Even as we hear them, as we meditate in it, let them sink deep into our spirit. May we grasp them by faith and begin to do explain. It is time for explain. It is time for the church to take that challenge. Even as we share. Yes, Lord. And we say as responsibility to the church, to the people, you have called and chosen like Joshua did. May we embrace them with faith and then may we move on to do the will of God. We overcome every challenge of the enemy. We overcome every trust of the wicked. But we know faithful is he that promised who will also perform. Lord, perform your miracles. Perform your miracles and let there be a supply that the assignment will be completed. We know we must finish it. And we are willing to do it. May your grace come upon us. May your grace be upon the brethren. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you want to give your life to Jesus, please? Just pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me from my sin. I bless you for saving my life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next week. And I know you'll be blessed because you came. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russo Kovner on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you.